Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Sandra Narayan, and I'm a stroke and interventional neurologist at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And it's my pleasure today to be interviewing Dr. Eva Rose, who is professor of acute neurology and head of the department at Amsterdam University Medical Center. He initiated a dedicated acute brain unit in the emergency department to improve door to needle times, and this ultra early treatment system formed the basis for the endovascular therapy setup at AMC Amsterdam and the blueprint for the treatment arm of the Mr. Clean trial. Professor Rose initiated and was PI of the CLOT Mr. Clean study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which demonstrated the treatment effects are sustainable over time and are also cost effective. He, along with Dr. Charles Majois, are co-PIs of the Mr. Clean No IV trial, which we will be discussing here shortly, within the Dutch Contrast Consortium, which stands for a collaboration for new treatments for acute stroke, which aims to improve ischemic stroke patient outcomes by advancing clinical trials and translational research. Dr. Rose, thank you for joining us today. Please tell us, how did we get here? We had a, uh, we had a new trial, the Mr. Clean No IV trial. Um, we set it up a couple of years ago. Um, we already thought of, of it um, right after the publication of the original Mr. Clean trial, uh, which was published in the New England in January of 2015. And it was the first trial to show uh, clinical efficacy of endovascular treatment uh, in stroke patients. So right after that, we decided that the next step would be to see whether um, the addition of alteplase is still needed. So that was the basis uh, for the Mr. Clean No IV study. Oh, that's great. And, um, I, you know, I, we have all been following as a stroke and neurointerventional community this trial along with the other uh, No IV trials over the last uh, couple of years. And enrollment proceeded more rapidly than expected in the last few months of the trial. To what do you attribute that? I think it's very simple. Um, I think that that everybody was um, was uh, quite, uh, let's say, um, uh, happy with the results of the original Mr. Clean trial, and everybody realized that the the next step would be to find out whether uh, intravenous alteplase is still useful, is still needed in in these patients. So, despite the COVID uh, uh, pandemic um, we had, uh, we managed to get the, the, the trial finished uh, ahead of time, and we're very proud of it, yeah. No, yeah, that's great. How did the protocol of Mr. Clean IV differ from the other direct-to-endovascular treatment trials that you highlighted in your presentation? Yeah. Well, um, there were uh, there are, there are now three uh, Asian trials uh, published. Um, there is the direct MT trial, um, which was the first one to be published, and the direct MT trial from China is a, a sister trial from the Mr. Clean No IV trial. In fact, uh, Professor Marjois and myself were on the steering committee uh, of this uh, Chinese direct MT trial. And the only difference we had between the two trials was the um, was the primary endpoint. Uh, in uh, the Mr. Clean No IV, we chose for a um, superiority design. So um, our primary endpoint is looking at superiority of direct endovascular treatment over the combination. While in the Chinese trial, we decided to go for a non-inferiority primary endpoint. Uh, which is the secondary outcome in the Mr. Clean No IV trial. So that's the only difference there is. And in fact, uh, we worked so closely together that, for instance, the core lab, which was used in the Chinese direct MT trial, um, was trained by, uh, by our team from the Netherlands. So a very close collaboration between direct MT and No IV in a similar, quite similar trial. Um, the other Chinese uh, uh, DAVT trial um, just published in, in JAMA uh, this year uh, had also a quite similar design and only the uh, Japanese SKIP trial is a bit different um, in that the, in, Jap in Japan um, the usual dosage for alteplase is not uh, 0 0.9 uh, milligrams uh, but it's 0 0.6 so they are used to a lower dosage um, in Japan for alteplase. So that's that's a, that's a difference for sure, but overall a quite similar design. Um, during the course of your uh, trial, um, when you did interim analyses, you tweaked some aspects of the systems of care to um, achieve faster door to puncture times. How did you do that? And um, how did you determine what steps were necessary? 
And what we said to the participating centers is that we wanted really to investigate uh, the effect of uh, having uh, Alta Place on board or not. Um, one of the things we feared most when setting up the trial was that um, that the group which was would have uh, the combination treatment, so the combination of intravenous alpha place and uh, mechanical thrombectomy, uh, would have a delay in getting mechanical thrombectomy as compared to the group which would receive direct mechanical thrombectomy. And and since we wanted uh, only to have to, to look at the effect of alpha place, we wanted to make sure that in both groups um, the let's say the stroke onset to groin puncture was more or less similar. So what we did is that we, we, we went to all the centers and we said, um, well, that's the primary focus we have to, 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 to look upon. Uh, and we, we, we kept looking at the, uh, the door to crown punctures uh, in all centers. And if we saw that they were slowing for whatever reason, we just gave them feedback, hey, look out, you're slowing. And keep in mind that it's very important that we try to be as fast as possible, as we always do. We always try to be as fast as possible. I don't have to tell you, time is brain is still the most important message we have to talk about. Um, but especially when you're doing a trial and you just want to know, is there an additional effect of Alta Place? You have to keep in mind that, that you have to, to get the endovascular treatment in both treatment arms um, well as quickly as possible and in similar time frames. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Did any aspect of the results or um, side effects, secondary outcomes, surprise you? Well, one of the most striking results for me is the uh, the similar result we have uh, on hemorrhages. Um, when looking at symptomatic intracranial hemorrhages, um, we expected that the, the combination uh, therapy, um, the, the group with Alta Place, would suffer more from uh, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhages. And looking at the results, um, the intracranial hemorrhages are, are quite similar between the two groups. And that's, that's for me, one of the most striking results. Um, in fact, if you think about it, um, we always said, um, looking back at the old uh, uh, Alta Place trials from the, uh, from the 19th of the last century, we always said, well, we have an overshoot of, of hemorrhages because of patients being treated with a hemolytic drug with, with, with Alta Place. So that's, that's logical. And we always said, well, the benefit um, uh, for the ischemic stroke is, 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 is bigger than, than, the, than the, the results on the, the effect on, on hemorrhages. So the net result is positive. But when looking at our trial results right now, you could argue, it's just a thought, you could argue that the, the, um, the main reason why patients get a hemorrhage is not because they are treated with alta plates, it's just because they have recanalization and they have reperfusion. Um, and, and there's not so much um, uh, influence of, of alta plates because that's, that's the only way, in my mind, you can explain those striking results we have with quite similar results of hemorrhages in both groups. So that, that's, for me, one of the most surprising results I hadn't expected. So what do you feel are the next steps for um, the uh, collaboration or, or for the Mr. Clean series? Well, we're still, still working on, uh, on, there are still several trials within the collaboration going on. Uh, there is the Mr. Clean Late, which is looking at um, uh, the treatment of patients uh, outside of the window of six hours, so six to 24 hours. Um, and we're still working on, on other trials. But I think that, that um, the main thing we need to focus on is pre-hospital triage. Um, what I see right now, and that, that's, that's becoming more and more clear, is that it's, it's, um, uh, we have to select our patients better, which patient is going to a, a primary stroke center and which uh, uh, patient is going to a comprehensive stroke center. And wouldn't it be nice if we have had a tool, something very simple, which we could use at home or in the ambulance um, to just find out whether a patient has a hemorrhage or a patient has an ischemic stroke. And if he has an ischemic stroke, whether he has a stroke which is probably caused by a large vessel occlusion. So you could directly um, direct the, the ambulance to the to the right facility. That would be, that, that, I think that would be the, the next great thing uh, we should have we should be focusing on. Thank you for those insights. Um, and thank you for taking the time to share your comments about the trial. I, I'd like our viewers to know that Drs. Rose Majois, 
and uh, four other physicians from three academic medical centers in the Netherlands uh, on December 17, 2020, were jointly awarded the prestigious Gold Winkler Medal by the Dutch Neurology Society for their unique contributions to stroke and endovascular research. We're very proud of them for this tremendous contribution. And it was the first time since 1950 that this prize was not awarded to one person in particular, but to a group of individuals. Thank you.